My name's Peter, and I'm running a house up in the mountains of Arkansas. I've been here for about a week, and I've had so many things I admire about the place. The view's breathtaking, peace and quiet are a nice touch, and lack of people around is soothing, to say the least. What caught my eye in the first place about the home was the price. It was only $500 a month. I was aware of this because the previous renter went missing not too long ago. The real estate agent told me how the knowledge of this spooked most people off, but I told her that it didn't bother me. See, the previous renters was just some old lady, so I figured that she went into the mountains and couldn't find her way back. Oh, that probably should have brought Lassie with her. She lost out on a great deal. Better for me, I suppose, but that's not why I'm writing this story. See, no, this is about what I found the other day. I was moving some old crap around and stepped on a loose floorboard. I damn near broke my ankle. I went to put the plank back in place, and then I noticed something underneath the space between the floorboards. It's a yellow and black book, like the ones that you find for those DIY dummy guides. Now, I myself have never needed anything like that, because I'm not an idiot. I'm not someone who needs a Dr. Seuss kind of book to try to explain life to me. I'm some kind of toddler. However, what caught my attention about the book was not the wording, but the, well, the lack thereof. The most noteworthy thing about the cover was the title, House Building for Dummies. A guide on home construction and renovation. I scoffed. It was just a stupid self-help book. I picked the book up off the shelf. I brushed the dust off the cover. You know, was this the old lady's book? Or maybe the person before her? Opening the book, I noticed how the first page had creases all over it. It was starting to turn a yellowish brown around the corners. I read the words on the page out loud. Welcome to your how-to guide for home construction and renovation. If you are reading this, then that means that you have been selected for the Homegrown Society's How-To for Home Exterior and Interior Design. Flipping to the next page, I saw the words, Be bold! You are now a member. I had to admit, I was a little intrigued. I put the floorboard back and took the book to my bedroom, then laid in bed and continued reading. For starters, here are 10 easy steps for foundation and exterior construction. Step 1. Pump those brakes. The first thing you want to do is draw up a detailed blueprint of your desired home. Or, if it better suits you, you can hire a member-provided architect. Step 2. Bottoms up. Choose a lot with a strong, solid foundation, preferably a flat, as not to have any undesirable misshapes discovered. Step 3. Framing 101. Construct a rough frame for your house. Be sure to account for any sloping or cracks that could lead to potential leaks. Step 4. If they can do it, so can you. Complete rough plumbing, electrical, and HVAC. Make sure to account for unsightly future odors that may build up over time in your home. Step 5. Winter is coming, so why not prepare for it? Install insulation and take time to ensure your property around your home. Soundproofing is also a viable option, if in a populated area. I stopped reading and thought to myself about just how terrible this guide is. There's no way anyone could actually build a house using this. The steps are too unclear for someone to actually construct a home. Still, I wanted to know where this book was going, so I continued reading. Step 6. Safety Squares Complete the process of placing drywall up and around the full exterior of your home, adding the finishing touches to the surrounding foundation. Step 7. What's walls without a roof? When it comes to roofing, any kind of style would suffice. Do take care to avoid the addition of a chimney or attic, as not to risk the possibility of disturbing neighbors with loud sounds or banging. Step 8. For more than just storing junk. The addition of a garage would be wonderful for various useful tools and equipment. Avoid storing equipment that may cause noisy individuals to take notice. Step 9. These pipes aren't just for jumping. It's important to choose solid pipes for your home and well insulate them to prevent leaking or total deconstruction so you can avoid the need for outside help and risk unsightly discoveries being made. For all your pipe replacement needs, refer to page 47. I turned to page 47. The only thing on the page was a phone number. The area code was from Missouri. I thought about calling it, but I decided to read more of the book first. Step 10. Where old relics collect dust. If you desire to have either a basement or attic in your home, please take the following steps. For an attic, keep the area well ventilated, but insulated and soundproofed for any occasional occupants inside. For the basement, keeping the area well ventilated and insulation doesn't have to be a priority. Additionally, windows are not needed but recommended to avoid prying eyes. Certain steps could be taken if your neighbors are the noisy type. The best method to combat these neighbors is strategically placing objects such as plants or flowers around the windows. Huh. 
I stopped reading again. I was now suspecting that there might be more to this self-help book. The lack of sunlight coming from my window alerted me to how late it was. I'll definitely read the rest tomorrow. I closed the book and I left it on my dresser. I woke up the next day around 2 p.m. Later than I wanted, but not too much of a problem for me. Currently unemployed, thinking about getting into real estate. I had enough savings left over to invest in such a thing, so it's a possibility. A thought comes to me. It's kind of ironic that I found a how-to guide for house building. And this, in turn, gets me thinking about that book. 10 Easy Steps for Interior Construction and Wiring Step 1. Keep your hard hats near. On the interior, trim down any protruding wood planks and remove the excess debris to maximize possible living space. This method can also be deployed to create an adjacent room one wishes to remain undetected by guests. Step 2. Knock on wood. Install hard surface flooring and countertops. Flooring should be made out of hard, solid material, one which can sustain heavy thrashes. Try to avoid carpeting floors as they can make it difficult to remove any unwanted stains. Step 3. Bright ideas. Light fixtures are a necessity for homeowners, but yours can offer special optimization to control switches from various distances. This is extremely useful in keeping others from activating them and preventing guests from entering private rooms. Step 4. Safety first. People need an outlet, and so do houses. For a safer home, it's recommended to invest in GFCI outlets to keep an occupant from accidentally harming themselves. Or you. Knock knock. A loud pounding at my front door made me jump a little out of my skin. I rushed to the door and peered out the peephole. A man in a suit stood on my porch, a brown briefcase in his hand. He looked like one of those traveling salesmen. I yanked the door open. Good evening, sir. He greeted me in his boisterous salesman voice. I'm with. What do you want? I asked before he could finish whatever corporate crap was about to come out of his mouth. Oh, sorry to bother you. His skin looked flushed. I... I came here to discuss the empty lot of yours in Missouri. I glared at him. Yeah, what about it? Sir, I'd like to come in and discuss it further with you. No, what do you want with my property in Missouri? He straightened out his tie and put on a nervous smile. Well, I'm a real estate agent. I, I thought I could help you sell or rent out the property to someone. Yeah, no thanks, man. His smile faltered. Well, if you change your mind... He pulls out a white card from inside his jacket. Here's my card. I snatched the card away from him. It was a cheap business card with his name and phone number under it. Have a good day. I slammed the door in his face. I threw his card into the trash, then sat back down and continued reading this strange book. Step 5. Life Wiring Wiring a house is a big task for anyone, but we'll explain it to you as simply as possible. Take care to properly set up the wires throughout the house. Attach separate wiring to an adjacent private room. Step 6. A clean home is a happy home. Sinks are a much-needed staple for any home, but are especially useful for members, as they can be used to wash off any leftover messes. Garbage disposals are also useful for disposing of large amounts of waste. Step 7. Don't forget to wash your hands. The bathroom is where duty calls, so to speak, but for members, it's much more than that. It's a place where guests in your home can relieve themselves with supervision if needed. The room is also great for large cleanups ones that can't fit down the garbage disposal. Please make sure to properly clean up after disposal is complete. Step 7. Self-reflecting. Mirrors are the window to the soul, as some say. But for you, they are to make sure that you've cleaned up well and look normal to any guests that visit your home. Step 9. Watching paint dry has never been so fun. The color of your house is the first thing others will see upon entering. Choose a color that will best cover stains, or prevent them from being seen by the naked eye. Step 10. Hard work pays off. Do one more thorough sweep of your home to be sure that it meets standards. Keep security up to date to prevent any unwanted guests from entering or leaving as they please. For any additional help, refer to page 66 for a member-supplied contractor. After reading that last step, I found myself in a state of disbelief. There was obviously a bigger purpose for this odd book than just providing home construction tips. I think that's what intrigued me the most about it. I needed to read more and find out information on the person or persons who wrote this book. Flipping to the next page, I was met with blank paper. Flipping through the remaining pages yielded the same result. I looked in desperation for a copyright stamp or any names and phone numbers. I wrote down the two I ran across before. Searching the web for phone numbers led me nowhere. 
I felt completely unsatisfied. As a last resort, I tried calling the numbers from page 47 and 66. Page 47's number just kept ringing. The number on page 66 was disconnected. I felt like a rat running for cheese in a maze, desperate to find answers. I scanned through the book again, and this was as futile as I had already done so many times before. I stayed up all night wondering how the hell I could get the answers that I needed. Next morning, I dialed the number of the real estate agent who had sold me the house. She professed to not knowing anything about the book. I neglected to divulge any more details about it, so I found myself at yet another dead end. Then I thought about where I found the damn book. The floorboards. I think, oh, of course. Maybe there's another book or something that could give me any way to contact the author of it. I sprinted to the kitchen and removed the loose floorboard, hoping to find something, anything. All that greeted me was dust. And a huge sense of disappointment. Same kind of disappointment that you'd feel if you found out your closest friend was a genuine fan of Nickelback. But upon further inspection... I noticed what looked like a flashlight under a thick amount of dust. I snatched it up and flipped the switch. It wasn't a flashlight. It was a black light. This thing about it reminded me of one of those cliche detective movies, and then a, an idea crossed my mind. I grabbed the book from nearby and shined the light in the blank pages of the book, and voila! Hidden words appeared. There were new instructions that offered way more clear and concise methods for this book that appeared to be a home renovation guide on the surface. Now flipping to the other pages, I noticed something very odd. On page 49, there were more steps for home construction. There, These were visible to the naked eye. It's strange that I missed it. I thought I was more thorough, but I brushed it off and I kept reading the steps. Bonus. Five easy steps for home decor. Step one. Introduction. Furniture is the heart of the home. So make sure not to let your frugal side take priority over providing your guests with applicable sitting arrangements. This will make them feel comfortable enough to let their guard down. Wrapping plastic over your furniture is ideal to prevent any hard-to-remove stains left over from your guests. Step 2. Cleaning Service As for more on page 47, if a call has been placed, whether answered or not, all occupants of the residence should vacate the home within 48 hours to apply a proper cleanup process to be carried out. Any occupants still inside the premises will be considered part of the cleaning process. Step 3. Unsuspecting. Install driveways and walkways outside your home with careful thought put into the appearance of each. This will help lead others into a false sense of safety and the illusion of security before entering your home. Step 4. Spitting image. You are your home. So try to model the house after yourself. Decorate with intention of conveying the person you want others to see you as. Avoid having decor or objects that could prematurely reveal any unsightly side of you. Step 5. Sharing is caring. Pat yourself on the back. After all that elbow grease and hard work you put into constructing the house of your dreams, it's finally time to take a look at the finished product. If you're interested in sharing your hard work with the other homegrown society members, refer to page 92. We strongly advise you to consider conducting a final walkthrough with a supplied contractor. Refer to Step 10 of Interior Construction for information on this. Reading the next set of pages required the use of the black light. I shined the light over the pages and read several more steps, including one about renting houses to others. As I now consider myself a member of the Homegrown Society, I feel it's only fair to the other members to spare the details of those pages. See, what I'll, what I'll say is that I retrieved that real estate agent's card from the trash. Said his name, Carl Greenberg. Unsurprisingly, looking up his name and business information led to no real results. This is the first time I felt good about coming up with zero results. I called him later that evening and asked him to help me sell my home in Missouri. And after I constructed and renovated it, with the help of his book, of course, I finished my phone call with Mr. Greenberg and laid down in bed, pondering if I could really go through with this. Then after I saw a young woman jog past my window, I thought to myself, you yeah, know, maybe. Maybe this whole house building thing really was for me after all.
Hey there kids, it's me, Mr. Creepypasta, and we are back after Halloween. So, I want to give a big thank you to my Patreons. Those uh, specifically are the ones that are in the description, and Joey Gilbert, Daniel Polson, Trace Miles, Jordan Alexander Sanchez, Wayne Milstead, Chumpinski, Ken Lando Higuchi, Brianna Ventine Jensen, Buddy Burrows, Stephen Van House, Tristan Pelton, G Weevil 3, Asia, The Red Oak Shield Virus, Sandy Barney, Nico Kao, Caleb Dougal, Dante Rao, Last Blade Song, The Ginger Bros, Don Mewmeister, Eliminator 86, Nebsky, Alex, Steampunk Sinner, The Rafael Rodriguez, Optimistic Avocado, and Dr. Strawberry. If you guys would like to join them, you can always head over to patreon.com slash mrcreepypasta. Even helping with $1 actually helps keep me alive. So a big thank you to all of you who are there from $1 all the way up to however much that you guys give. Thank you. I appreciate you guys subscribing and checking back with the channel every single day because, dear lord help me, we are on daily uploads, meaning new horror stories from me here at Mr. Creepypasta on YouTube or Mr. Creepypasta on Spotify. Sweet dreams, kids.